My name is Inigo Montoya. You kill my functor. Prepare to die. Welcome to a Programming Languages virtual meetup post recording. My name is Connor Hookstra, and in today's video, we're going to be covering Chapter 9 of Category Theory for Programmers by Bartosz Maluski, entitled Function Types. As we have done for several of the videos up until this point, we're going to take a look at our Pent Ultimate diagram, uh, partially stolen from George Wilson's talk and also partially stolen from the Category Theory as a Tool of Thought. Up until this point, we have uh, covered everything in green and the orange is representing things that are duplicated in both of the diagrams in chapter nine. Uh, the two things on this diagram or composition of diagrams that are covered are exponentials and Cartesian closed categories. Moving on to our table of contents, you can see there is a lot of things that are covered in this chapter. We are going to uh, cherry pick only a couple things to cover here. So we're going to spend most of our time talking about currying because I think that uh, is the most that I can sort of add to with my experience from functional programming. And then we're going to briefly touch on Cartesian closed categories. And then I'm going to highlight uh, something Bartage said from the corresponding lectures to this chapter. So skipping straight into currying, uh, what is currying? It says in the book, currying is essentially built into the syntax of Haskell, a function returning a function, aka A arrow, and then in parentheses, B arrow C, is often thought of as a function of two variables. That's how we read the unparenthesized signature a arrow b arrow c. So just highlighting that basically these two things are the same and uh, we can think of them uh, slightly differently. Most people I tell to think of the uh, a arrow b arrow c as a function that takes two inputs and returns a single output, uh, but technically it's closer to really what it is at the top. So every function in Haskell takes a single argument and then returns uh, something. The text then goes on to say, strictly speaking, a function of two variables is one that takes a pair, a product type. So as I mentioned before, a lot of folks I tell to think of that A arrow B arrow C as a function that takes two um, arguments. Uh, but really, it's more accurate uh, to say that a function that takes two arguments in Haskell is a function that takes a product type. And this is the equivalent of what we have really in C++ and other languages where you have a a function declaration that takes two arguments, and that is the equivalent of a function in Haskell that takes a, a pair or a two tuple. And the text further goes on to say it's trivial to convert between the two representations and the two higher order functions that do it are called unsurprisingly curry and uncurry. And so we have the two uh, function uh, declarations or aka type signatures and their definitions, but honestly, this is a bit um, confusing in my opinion of what these are doing. So uh, for me, it's easier to understand this by looking at an example. So the example that I'm going to use is actually a problem that I covered in one of the second talks that I gave in 2019 called Better Algorithm Intuition. And the problem is the following. It's uh, problem 905 from Leak Code called Sort Array by Parity. It says, given an array A of non-negative integers, return an array consisting of all of the even elements of A followed by all the odd elements of A. So basically, you are um, doing some kind of predicate sort such that all the even elements are at the front and all the odd elements are at the back. And I go on to show that in C++, you can solve this with a single algorithm in the algorithm header called std partition. So here we've got uh, two iterators defining our range and then a, a unary function object in the form of a lambda that's just checking, is it even? And if it is, then it's going to put everything at the front. And uh, if it's odd, it's going to go to the back. And note that this is not a stable algorithm. There is a stable version of this algorithm called stable partition that keeps the relative orders. But for this, uh, the problem doesn't ask uh, for you to maintain the relative order. So that's great. We can do this in C++ with a single algorithm called partition. And this is the updated version that uses C++ 20 ranges. Note that we no longer have to pass in two iterators. We can just pass in the single uh, range, aka the container here, which is pretty cool. And you might be even uh, thinking at this point, you can make it a little bit more readable by naming our lambda and then just calling std range as partition A and then is even. And when we have this solution, it then makes it a little bit easier to see um, how this relates to uh, the comparable solution in Haskell. And this is what I show in the talk. So you can see that we're actually making use of uncurry here uh, because partition returns us the partitioned uh, vector, but uh, split into two vectors, and then that's stored in a tuple. So you can see in the top right, if we start with the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, calling partition odd, which is technically the opposite of what we should be doing. We should be calling partition even, so that's a bug. 
Um, but if we call partition odd, it puts all the odd elements in a, a list and then all the even elements in a list and then returns this to you in a two tuple or a pair. And then in order to add these together, we have to do this uncurry plus plus thing here. So what is that doing? So basically, if we take a look at this, if we go partition odd uh, one to 10, we get our pair or two tuple back. And what we want to be able to do is to concatenate these two lists together. And if we look at the signature of a concat concatenation, which is just uh, the plus plus put inside parentheses, we get something, uh, a type signature that takes a list of A's, takes another list of A's, and then returns you a list of A's. And that's just basically going to concatenate them together. And what we, what we want, though, is we want a a uh, function that takes a pair of lists of A's and then returns us a single list of A. And so we can transform this function, paren plus plus paren, into that function by using uncurry. So you can see here the type signature, this colon T, what that's doing is it's basically showing you the type signature of a function. When we uncurry paren plus plus paren, we get exactly what we want, a function that takes a pair of list of A's and then returns us a single list. So this is a, a motivating example that actually shows you um, a case where you need uncurry in order to do uh, what I'm trying to do. And I believe this is actually the first time when I was programming in Haskell that I went looking for a language feature or function that did exactly this, and then I stumbled across curry and uncurry. So curry, curry is just the exact opposite. It's going from uh, a tuple of list of A's uh, back to uh, this type signature here. So hopefully that uh, illuminates or demystifies a little bit of what curry and uncurry are doing. This takes us to the fourth subsection of chapter nine called Cartesian Closed Categories. And all we're gonna do is highlight sort of the three uh, bullet point list of what defines a Cartesian category. So the text reads, although I will continue using the category of sets as a model for types and functions, it's worth mentioning that there is a larger family of categories that can be used for that purpose. These categories are called Cartesian Closed and set is just one example of such a category. A Cartesian closed category must contain one, the terminal object, two, a product of any pair of objects, and three, an exponential for any pair of objects. So great to get that definition of a Cartesian closed category. And uh, I just thought I would highlight this one last thing, which uh, comes up, I think, in the very last subsection of chapter nine, where the text reads, computers are not only helping mathematicians do their work, they are revolutionizing the very foundations of mathematics. The latest hot research topic in that area is called homotopy type theory and is an outgrowth of type theory. It's full of booleans, integers, products and coproducts, function types, and so on. And as if to dispel any doubts, the theory is being formulated in Koch and Agda. Computers are revolutionizing the world in more than one way. And probably Idris should be added to uh, both Koch and Agda because those are sort of the trifecta of dependently typed languages that are uh, being used predominantly in sort of research areas. So I thought it was cool just that the uh, final subsection was mentioning these sort of more experimental programming languages. And last but not least, as always, you should check out the corresponding lectures to chapter nine. Obviously, I skipped over um, most of the subsections because otherwise this video would turn into a 30 or 40 minute video. Um, but I, I definitely wanted to highlight this one quote that I thought was um, really sort of uh, hit home for me. So at a certain point, uh, Bartage says the following, I needed the functoriality of the product. A product is a bifunctor. Not only does it take two objects and produces a third object, but does the same for morphism. So this is actually a paraphrasing of what Bartage said exactly. But um, I thought this was super, super um, uh, great for him to say because he's basically motivating why did we teach everything that we've taught up until this point you see he said you know why didn't we just introduce this all at once uh and and he's basically pointing out that we needed to get to chapter eight on functoriality and chapter seven on uh functors and bifunctors and profunctors um in order to uh basically motivate uh what's being taught in this chapter nine on uh function types so that is all for this video i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned something and i hope to see you in the next video chapter 10 on natural transformations